welcome back and let us get started with the uh, CTL model checking uh, algorithms for checking nested properties. So, so far what we had seen was that how we can check uh, properties which have a single E uh, and any of the temporal properties like X, G or F. Now, let us start by looking at this kind of a property that we have uh, the property EF, P and EG not Q. Okay, so, this EG is nested within this EF. Now, for CTL it is very simple. What we do is we start with the innermost properties, find out the state sets satisfying those properties and then use those state sets in computing the set of states satisfying the outer property. Okay. So, uh, it, it is not like that we start from the initial state and try to do this. We basically start from the states, set of states which satisfies the innermost property and then work backwards to find out all states satisfying the given property. So, for this what we are going to do is we will first uh, say that okay, we need to do EF of this thing okay, and then again decompose this further by saying that we need to find the state of se set of states satisfying p and we need to find the set of states satisfying e g not q. And then to solve this we need to find out the set of states satisfying not q. So, now having done this decomposition we will start from this one, we will find the set of states satisfying not q. Then find the set of states satisfying E g not q, find the set of states satisfying p, then find the set of states satisfying p and E g not q and then find the set of states satisfying this property. Okay. That is the way in which we do it. So, this is standard dynamic program. We start from the smallest components, solve those components and build them up to uh, find out the solutions to the main property. So, that is what we do. So, let us look at an example here. So, in this state machine, the yellow colored states are ones which satisfy P, the blue colored states are ones which satisfy Q and the red ones are ones which satisfies not P and not Q. Okay. And the property is this one that uh, EF, P and E g not Q. So, let us we will start with the set of states satisfying Q and then find out the set of states satisfying E g not Q. So, this is the set of states which are the set of states which satisfy not Q. The, the red ones and the yellow ones. Okay. So, the red ones and the yellow ones. So, this is a set of states satisfying not Q. Right. And now, we want to find out E g not Q. This is the set of states satisfying E g not Q. Now, if we go back one step, see for E g not Q, it is not just sufficient to have not q here. It has to be in a cycle where we have not q. Right? So, out of these states, which ones are in a cycle? So, it is these ones which are in a cycle. This one is not in a cycle containing uh, not q. Okay, because it has to go to this blue state. Okay. So, this is the set of states. Also, this one is not in a loop containing only not q states. So, this is the set of states that we will arrive at by computing e g not q. Now, next thing is we have to take the intersection of this with the p states because we need p and e g not q. Right. So, which ones uh, will be left? So, the only the yellow ones out of this region. So, this one, this one, this, this and this. Okay. 
this is T n e g not q states. Now, we need all states from which these states can be reached because we want E f of this. Right? So, these states obviously will be there in addition this one will come in because we can reach this, this will come in because of this transition. Uh, any of the other ones? I do not think so, right, there. So, this is the set of states satisfying E f p and E g not q, right. Complexity, the complexity of CTL model checking is linear in the size of the model and also linear in the size of the CTL formula, right. Why do we say it is linear in the size of the CTL formula? Because we do this decomposition and for each sub formula, we have to do one of those fixed point computations, right. For example, for this property, uh, for this property, we had to do one fixed point computation for this, right, and one fixed point computation for this one, right. So, the number of fixed point computations is linear in the size of the uh, of the state, state space, okay. And uh, we, what is the complexity of each of those fixed point computations? It is linear in the size of the state machine because what we are doing is essentially doing a DFS, right? DFS, BFS, or whatever we are traversing the state space only once for each of them. So, if M is the size of the model, F is the size of the formula, then the complexity of this is compare this with LTL. For LTL, this is not f, but 2 to the power f, because there the complexity was exponential in the for LTL model checking algorithms, exponential in the length of the formula. But still, in all of these problems, we know that this is the main main issue, right? It's because of this size that we run into capacity problem. Fairness, fairness is defined as follows. Fairness f is a set of states S1, S2 through Sn and the fair path of a model is a path which visits the states in f infinitely often. A CTL formula f is true under the fairness constraint if f is true only in the fair parts of the model. Okay, if we only consider the fair parts of the model and f is true in that restriction of the model, then we say the CTL property is true under the fairness constraint f. Okay. Now, look at this thing. If you look at a f g 1, along all paths in future G 1 must hold. If you look at this particular, this is a starting state, right. Does this hold? No, because it can always continue, there is a path in which it can always go on in this, right. Now, in that case, this is not going to hold, right. Now, remember that this is computation tree logic. What is that computation tree? If you start from this state and enumerate all the paths as a tree, then that is a computation tree. So, in that tree, there is one branch which goes along in this forever. It is an infinite tree. Right? 
So therefore, uh, we must now, now let us see what happens if we produce a fairness constraint which says R1 is asserted infinitely often. Now when we say that R1 is asserted infinitely often, then we see the in this R1 is asserted, okay, in this R1 is asserted infinitely often. But if you land up in this state, then R1 is not asserted infinitely often, right. So under the fairness assumption that R1 is an asserted infinitely often, this becomes the restricted structure, only the dash edges, right. Now, if you look at this restricted structures, then A of G1 is true under this, okay. Now, in terms of fairness, when you say R1 is asserted infinitely often, it means state satisfying R1 must be visited infinitely often. So here state satisfying R1 are which ones? This is the uh, states S0 and S2. So the fairness F is S0, S2. Under the fairness S0, S2, this property Fg on holds on this restricted case structure. Is that clear? Right. Now, why do we want to have fairness in CTL model checking? Because we want to express things like that there are certain assumptions about the environment behavior and we want to check the property under those environment behavior. So, that the fact that R1 is asserted infinitely often is one of those behaviors. So the formal semantics of fairness is like this, that a fair Kripke structure is a six tuple where we have these in addition to the usual stuff, we have this F, okay. And this F is a subset of the set of states, okay. It is a set of fairness constraints. Let pi be a path in M and let INF pi as we described previously, be the set of states in S, set of states that are visited infinitely often, okay. Now we say that pi is fair if and only for every element P belonging to F, INF pi intersection P is not equal to empty. Now uh, see that this is one fairness constraint is a set of states. See if you go back here, what was the what was this fairness constraint that R1 is asserted infinitely often? This fairness constraint is this one state set S0, S2. Okay? So if you have k different fairness constraints, you will have k such state sets. Okay? That is why this is a subset of 2 to the power s, which means that it is a subset of the power set of S. So this is a collection of state set. Each state set corresponds to a fairness constraint. And a path is fair if all the fairness constraints are satisfied, right. So that is what is meant here that for every element P belonging to F, what is P? P is a set of states. For every fairness constraint in F, which is represented by a set of states, the intersection is non-empty, which means that at least one state from that fairness set should be visited infinitely often. Okay. Now, what the CTL model checker does therefore, is that it has these fairness constraints and you have those algorithms for uh, finding out the set of states satisfying different properties, right. It imposes the fairness constraints and then checks those properties on the fair Kripke structure. Now, 
let us go back to LTL model checking. What were we doing in LTL model checking? We were taking the property, constructing a automaton out of it, taking the product of that automaton with the implementation, right? And we have a set of accepting states which must be visited infinitely often, right? Now, this becomes very similar at that at the end last part becomes very similar to CTL model checking with fairness, right. What will be the fairness constant? Your set of accepting states, the set of bookie accepting states will become your fairness constant and what property are you going to look for? What property are we going to look for? We want to look for whether there is any infinite path which in in the in the fair Kipke case structure. Right? So let me note it down. For LTL model checking, what we did was we took the M machine M, we created the automaton for B not phi, we take their product, okay. For this product, then we search want to search for that given where F is the set of accepting states. We want to see that find a path which visits some state of Right. So, what do we do? Let us suppo suppose that this product state machine is R. So, what we do is we CTL We will use a CTL model checker, okay. So, the fairness constraint will be set F, okay. Under so, R is the Kripke structure, F is the fairness constraint, it is going to find out the fair Kripke structure. What we want is whether there is any path in that whether there is any infinite path in the fair Kripke structure. If there is any infinite path in the fair Kripke structure, then that is a path which goes to uh, states in F infinitely often, right. So, what do you look for? You just look for the property whether e g What is easy to? It just looks for any path in the Kripke structure. Right? You do not, it does not have to satisfy anything, just true. Right? Unconstrained. It just looks for an unconstrained path in the infinite path in the e g because it has to be an infinite path, right. So, you have to have some cycle in it. Is this making sense? Uh, are you getting what I am saying? We want to transform the LTL model checking into the CTL model checking problem. What we have done is we have created the bookie automaton of the negation of that property, take, taken its intersection with the in implementation M and 
constructed another automaton R. This automaton R will be the Kripke structure for the CTL model checker. Okay. But every path in this Kripke structure is not an accepting run of this automaton. It is only those runs which go through states in f infinitely often. So, we take this f and pass it on as the fairness constraint to the CTL model checker and say that look this is my Kripke structure r, this is my fairness constraint f and I want to solve the property e g true. In other words, please find a path in the Kripke structure e g true is any path in the Kripke structure which exists in the fair Kripke structure. So, in the Kripke structure under the fairness constraint f, because if there is such a path then that is a path which is an accepting path here, right. So, that is how you have a core CTL model checker and you can actually transform this LTL model checking problem to a CTL model checker. All right. Now, there are various approaches that people have taken towards this the LTL and CTL model checking. The main intention of all this is to reduce the computational overhead. Now, we know that CTL model checking, uh, CTL model checking is linear in the size of the machine and the size of the property. LTL model checking is P space complete, right, but it is we have algorithms which are exponential in the size of the property, but linear in the size of the state machine. Now, the whole issue there is that how do we manage the state machine. So, broadly there are a set of different approaches which people have taken. First one is that we could use BDTs to represent the state transition relation and then we use this P image computation and fixed point computation to find out the set of states satisfying different properties. And we now know that how to transform the LTL model checking problem into CTL model checking problem and solve it using the CTL model checker. Besides BDTs, so, BDD based model checking which is uh, this is sometimes colloquially referred to as symbolic model checking, but symbolic model checking is actually, actually means that we have a symbolic method for doing the model checking, right. So, it has strictly speaking that symbolic model checking has is not something which is related to BDTs, it is actually larger than BDTs. So, BDT based model checking is one of the symbolic model checking approaches, yeah, but as in the original the, the papers in which the BDT based model checking algorithms were presented for this first time, they referred to the technique as symbolic model checking and that is why people colloquially you know, started referring to BDD based model checking as symbolic model checking, right. But thereafter, we will go through this in a little bit of details. There was the notion of SAD based model checking, okay, where instead of using BDDs, we will reduce the model checking problem to Boolean satisfiability, okay. So, that approach, for, so under this there is the bounded model checking approach, which or BMC. Again you see bounded model checking basically means that we want to check the truth of the property up to certain temporal bound. 
So, I am going to look ahead for up to maybe k cycles and see whether I can get a proof or a refutation of the property within those k cycles, right. So, that is what is meant by bounded model checking. Again, it does not have any direct relationship with SAT, but SAT based model checking algorithms, they work with these bounds and they, they you can use BMC with SAT. So, that is why you know again colloquially people try to relate these two, but philosophically bounded model checking is only working the model checking algorithm with certain bounds. So, there is no reason why that should be anything to do with SAT, but SAT based model checking algorithms typically work with these bounds. So, they are uh, you know, BMC approaches. We are going to look at these two in some details. The the another way of doing it is what is called the automata theoretic okay. what you do here is again you see th this is also a uh, the, the methodology that I am going to talk about here again is colloquially related to automata theoretic approach, but again philosophically it does not have to be that way. For example, what people do here is that you take the property, you take the Kripke structure and then instead of computing the product, you compute the product on the fly. So, what you do is that you do a depth first computation of the product, right. Are you getting what I am saying? You do not explicitly create the two state machines and take their product. You have both state machines in an implicit form. We do not create the expanded graph of the state, state machine, rather we have these, this state transition relation corresponding to the implementation, we have the state transition relation corresponding to the checker automata. And then we systematically do a depth first traversal of the implementation and check the property on each of those traces, right. Now note one thing is that when you are looking for GP, a property like GP, if you are going depth first, so you get P, you get P, you get P and then suddenly you find a loop, right. When you find a loop, then you know that G P is true in this path, right. So, in your depth first traversal, you keep on seeing whether you have already reached a visited vertex or a loop, you have looped back to a vertex and then you can take a decision about the truth of that property at that point of time, ok. So, this is the way in which this on the fly model checking approach works, okay. So, these are broadly the three core approaches that are followed for model checking. In addition to this, there is a whole lot of techniques that have come up to reduce the size of the state space and we can reduce the size of the state space in a variety of ways, ok. One of them is that we only try to, we prune out all those parts of the state space which is not necessary for proving a particular property, right. We use a, an assumptions about the environment to prune out the state space and there is also a technique called counter example guided abstraction refinement in which I will talk about in a little bit because that has become a very core part of model checking today uh, in which you start with a very abstract version of the state machine, prove the property in that, ok. If you are able to prove the property, then the abstraction is constructed in such a way that it guarantees that the property also holds in the actual state space. 
On the other hand, if you get a counter example, then there is another technique by which you check whether the ex counter example is real. In the sense, is it the case that the counter example is only there in the abstraction, but not there in the actual state space? If so, then we have to go back to the, the abstraction and refine the abstraction so that this spurious counter example does not come again. Right? And then again run the check. The advantage of this is that you are always trying to prove the property on an abstract state machine. So, the chances are that if it holds, then in many cases you will be able to prove the property with a with an abstraction which is much smaller than the actual state space. Right. And this in practice works pretty well because properties typically do not need the entire behavior of the entire design. It, it, it requires only some part of the behavior of, of the whole design. So, if the abstraction can capture only that part, then you can nicely prove the property on that part. Right. So, we are going to look into that a little bit uh, in, in as philosophical way as possible. So, the first thing that we will look at is the cone of influence reduction. This is a very um, the first cut thing that people do in model checking tool. So, this is uh, the original circuit okay. and let us say that we want to prove the property that always R 1 implies next G 1, okay. R 1 implies next G 1. Now, if now, what we do is that we take each of these signals and we try to see whether they are in the cone of influence of these signals. So, does R1 affect this property? Yes. So, R1 stays. Does G1 affect this property? Yes. So, G1 stays. Can R2 affect this property? No, because R2 in no way can influence the value of G1. Okay, R2 cannot influence the value of G1. R2 cannot influence the value of R1. So R2 is not in the cone of influence of this property. Is G2 in the cone of influence of this property? No, because G2 can in no way influence R1 or G1. Okay. So, these two drop out. Okay. Now, we reduce the state machine by dropping R2 and G2. Now, think of the state machine. How many states did it originally have? 16 states. Why? Because two state bits and two input bits. So, in the non-deterministic state machine, we would have 16 states, right. Okay. Now, those 16 states have what? R1, R2, G1, G2, right. Now, in that state machine, we are dropping the R2 and G2 variables, right. And creating an abstract state machine. All right, that is the cone of influence reduced state machine. So that state machine will have only this. This part of the circuit will be eliminated, and it is only this one that will remain. And this state machine has only four states. Why? R1 and G1. These are the two state bits. So we have four states. Is that clear? Now, every time we will not be so lucky. For example, if we had a property which involved R2 and G2, then let us see, then R2 will stay, G2 will stay, R1 will also stay because R1 can affect G2. 
not only that g 1 will also stay because g 1 also can affect right. So, if there is a property over r 2 and g 2 then we will have to keep all four of them right. So, we will not get any cone of influence reduction right? Now, in a large circuit when you are looking at a property which is which has a small cone of influence this is a very useful reduction because it throws away a lot of the circuit and only preserves your cone of interest right. How do you compute the cone of influence for a variable? You start with that variable work backwards across the flops right until you have found out every variable in the cone. So, for, for example, to find the cone of G 1 we have R 1 in the cone of G 1 then we do not have anything else in the cone of G 1. If you like look at the cone of G 2 then G 1 is in the we work backwards. So, if we work backwards along this then we find G 1 is it in is in its cone then when we work backwards along this we find R 1 is it is in its cone we find like this that R 2 also is in is in its cone right. So, that is how you do cone of interest reduction just by traversing the circuit and uh, determining no state space, state space traversal is done here only traverse the circuit and find out what is the cone of influence. Right. I think uh, okay. before we go into bounded model checking let me just I will talk of this in the next class uh, ok. So, in addition to the BDD and SAT based tools we have on the fly FPV tools which I just now mentioned these are called automata theoretic on the fly FPV tools it creates the checker automaton and the emptiness search is done depth first thereby saving space and it creates model checking time for space efficiency right? because you do not create the product explicitly rather you do a depth first traversal. This one thing which I missed out is that there are some ATPG based FPV tools. Now, from your testing course you know what ATPG is. So, the idea is pretty simple we take the checker automaton ok, we take the RTL and then what we do is we synthesize the checker automaton as a non deterministic F FSM a behavioral state machine okay. and then we put an we want to find out whether the checker automaton output and the RTL output will differ at some point of time. Right. So, what we are effectively doing is we are embedding the checker inside the design and then we are doing an ATPG to see if the there is a difference in the output. Right. In other words you might also think of it like this that you take the negation of the property create an automaton on for that make it part of the design and then check whether its output can ever be 1 because if its output can ever be 1 then the negation of the property is satisfied right. So, basically in that part of the circuit which repre represents the output of the autom checker you look for a stuck at 0 fault right. So, if you are able to find out any test pattern by which that becomes 1 then for that inputs the circuit actually refutes the property is that clear Anvish. Hmm? So, now, this is not going to be a complete proof procedure unless we have 100 percent test coverage. Now, it may so happen that you are there is a test pattern which can cover that fault, but you are unable to determine it right. So, then you do not know the answer to the property checker whether it is true or not. So, what we will do is we will stop here today and then in the next class we will look at bounded model checking ok and we will look at how uh, it will manage to add different types of constraints in different ways to keep the state space contained. Okay. 
having done that the only other part that will remain in the formal property checking is the counter example guided abstraction refinement approach. After that we will go into different things, alright, thank you.